come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that has been described as a book club for movies where a group of intrepid film adventurers, cinema frontier uh, absorbers, uh, watch movies that are chosen round robin by the group, and then they sit down and they talk about them ad nauseum for your listening pleasure and enjoyment. I want to introduce you to the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. It's like the first time. It's like this is the first time you're hearing us. Well, it could be. And welcome aboard. If this is your first time, and even if it isn't, we ask you that you do us one quick favor. We hope that you'll hop on don't over. Don't stop listening. To, it, number one, don't stop listening. Number two, hop on over to wherever you found us and give us a like or a star rating. Or, hey, if you are feeling particularly verbose, give us a review. Because all of that stuff helps the aggregators move us upward toward the top. So we are found by other like-minded folks like yourself. And we get the word of the Saturday Night Freak Show out into the intrasphere mm-hmm. that are the cyber sphere. Yep. Cyber sphere. All those things. Yep. Also don't stop believing. And uh what else? Uh don't stop don't stop on don't stop off. ever stopping. Don't stop till you get enough. Yeah. Till you get enough. Yeah, right. <laughs> All these things apply, I feel. Well thank you for listening. Uh tonight <laughs> and we're sorry. We uh, yeah and we apologize. So uh happy new year to some of you. Uh oh, damn, know, I wish I had one of those things to blow right now. Like happy new year. Mm. Yeah, the little kazoo. So yeah. is. We also want to remind you, uh, for some of you, you have time to get in on this. In January, we're doing uh, a full month. Well, we're doing four episodes. I think actually one of them is going to go further than January. Yeah. Uh, Four episodes of movies that are chosen by you. Now, you have already selected or suggested the movies that you want us to watch. Now, they're up for a vote on our Facebook page, which is located at Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can find a link on Twitter. At Saturday Freak Show. And you can also find a link. No, you can't on Instagram. Do we ever put that you on there? Put it go in to, the, in you know the, what? In the we'll, comments. We'll put, or we'll put it there. We'll put you got a couple more days to go look at the list and vote for the movies that you want us to watch. We're going to take whatever gets the most votes. Those you have all movies. the power. Yeah, you can vote or you're going to have to deal with this shit. Yeah, that's right. So that's vote coming die. up. Stack the deck. Play game. Game the system. Like yeah. get whatever you want in there. Make get bots. Good. Get bots voting yeah. for you. <laughs> you know? like, bots yeah. in there. That may have already happened. Whatever yeah. you got to do. We don't know. Yeah. And so that's going to be a surprise in a couple of weeks. We've been looking at like there's some of them are pulling ahead. You know, you yep, know. Colin, you have all the knowledge right now. Sean and I have no idea have what no is even pulling ahead. It's going to be, you know. <laughs> I think, is this how you want to do it? You just want to go, like, should we announce on I want you to surprise me. Or just Colin. go like, boom, tonight we're watching this movie. Um, I mean, you know, you could announce on social media and I still might forget. Okay. Between yeah. the time you announce it and the time we record, I still might forget. Yeah, that so, happens during you know. normal shows. Anyway. Yeah. It's like, yeah. what are we watching tonight? Yeah. So, yeah. I would do it so they know. So they know yeah. what's okay. coming yep. up. So they if, can watch it if as we're, well. We're doing it so that the, you folks at home know then you have through January the 3rd. I know that doesn't give you a whole lot of time, but, but that's through January fault. 3rd to uh, vote. So, thank you again for listening. Tonight, we watched a movie that was chosen by Colin. Uh, Colin, on this special occasion, what did we watch tonight? We watched a movie that was chosen for this special occasion. It's called New Year's Evil, Evil. and it is from the year 1980, and it was directed by a fellow named Emmett Alston. Right. Oh, yeah. Him. And now I realize the question you were asking earlier. Oh, yeah. Nine Deaths of the, the Ninja, he, starring Sho Kazugi, the immortal classic, was directed by by this fellow. Also, Little Ninjas, which you're all familiar with from the year 1990, was directed by him as well. Force of the Ninja. Demon Warp, also directed by him. Anybody? And this is a Anybody? canon film, right? This is. We're, we're, canon. we're back to canon. Yay! <laughs> For those of you who don't know, we spent like the past two summers uh, plumbing the depths of the canon film the depths library. depths is right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got there. Yeah, we hit the bottom. We may still be there. We canon found second treasure, films. and then we just found bottom. Well, this mm-hmm. is an early one. This doesn't have the official canon. No, logo it doesn't. That everybody mm-hmm. remembers. Um, but yeah. because of this movie, we discovered the what the canon records and tapes. Uh, yeah, the soundtrack. Can, the soundtrack. You can find it on canon records and tapes, featuring music by tapes. Shadow. And uh, no, one song by Shadow. No, this is like not four. music. 
Really? Yeah. The yeah, credits. they were the band playing the. Did they the play whole all show? Of them? Yeah. yeah. No, because there was it Made like in they Japan. Changed. Okay, yeah. Made, made in Japan, Japan too. played some of them. Right. We apologize, Shadow and Made in Japan. We're not familiar with your work no. aside from this movie, but apparently they are available on the soundtrack to New Year's Evil uh, from Canon Records and Tapes. I'm sure it's a collector's item at this point in time. Yeah, find me that tape. Yeah. yeah. So I would say, okay, so here is my bold horror movie statement. This Uh-oh. movie comes from the golden age of the American slasher film. The 70s. Well, this is from 19- like 79 to like 81. <laughs> the golden age. Okay, so this is where I'm going to I'm going to plant yeah. the golden age at 1980 to 1983. Okay. Okay. So in my Didn't last um, long. No. Is that true? But it was new. But there were numerous films in that short amount right. of time. There was quantity, a fuckload. Quantity. The amount of movies. I mean, because I was looking them up. But 1981, I think, was the year that we reached mass saturation, mm-hmm. okay. where virtually every weekend you could go to the Cineplex near you or the single screen, I guess, in 1980, mm. and or the mall, and you could see a new horror film but that was most likely a slasher movie what a time to be alive mm-hmm. man wish i wish that was the, the case now i would love that well now we have like the callbacks i mean the closest thing i was surprised that but we don't this... get that many though no. we get like 80 year max max yeah, i mean the only yeah. movie that it's i thought... counting indian mainstream films yeah did you see hellfest no i did. I, I wanted to but I did. I didn't. But that was probably, I mean, that would fit in. Kind of, it's a right, modern version is, of yes. the kind of crap that was yes. cranked out on a weekly basis yes, it, <laughs> yes. in 1980. Um, Definitely. These films, I think that we can probably put our heads together and come up with uh, a um, the structure of the 80s slasher movie. And then I guess the question is, is this movie an 80s slasher Right, does this adhere to that structure? Well, I mean, the, the obvious thing going on is the title. Right. Mm-hmm. Sure. So following and so I a holiday title, even though I think, uh, you know, you can ultimately track all of this stuff back to Alfred Hitchcock and to uh, Psycho and the, the image of a guy holding a butcher's knife mm-hmm. and slashing at stuff is probably like, you know, this that inspired the whole genre. Mm-hmm. Right. Even though it doesn't take place in, in this film. Sure. Uh, I think the Canadians have to have a lot of. Uh, credit here because of black christmas exactly In this movie leans a lot on black christmas a lot well it was the pre-halloween movie do you think that john carpenter who made halloween in 1978 was aware of black christmas yes because like well, there's, the, there's that famous story that bob clark said he was going to make a sequel to black christmas set on halloween and that he the, as legend goes he told john carpenter <laughs> that and then john carpenter made the movie like, like that's a like, good idea legend goes john carpenter basically stole the idea from Bob Clark. Like, who knows how true that is, but that's, okay that, that. that is the the modern folklore version of that well, story. Well, going so. back and looking at those two movies, if you look at Halloween and you look at Black Christmas, Black Christmas, because I mean, I also include the Italian, that's why I say American slasher film. There's right. also the Italian giallo film, which was popular, you know, in like the 70 to 72, mm-hmm. right? Black Christmas is 1974 Mm -hmm. at the same year as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is doing something completely different. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Completely. I don't know. I don't consider that a slasher movie. No, it is different. Yeah. It's it's in its own category. Right. Uh, But Black Christmas has the, it utilizes the point of view of the killer, which I think at the time was something that was revolutionary in a way that parents reacted to these films and like, uh, um, you know, societal uh, right. groups mm-hmm. that, you know, like you're they- taking the form of the killer. Yes. You're putting the audience in that mindset. Th- that, that was the big thing I had going for it. Also like skip ahead, potential spoilers for black Christmas. The fact that you never like learn who the killer is in that movie was also a revolutionary thing at the time. Like there was no third act reveal of like, aha, like Scooby-Doo type yeah. mask reveal of like, it was him. So, and so the whole time, like yeah. you don't get that. Cause Halloween reveal virtually kind of does the same thing where you don't get the closure of knowing that you're, antagonist the killer has been taken care of right. the threat is still out there yep. and potentially can cause mm-hmm. more havoc mm-hmm. in the future um but halloween you know is the the tidal wave it's the 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 high point right it's the, yeah, it's the, peak. It's the crest yeah mm-hmm. and all of the 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 success of that movie was so great that 
uh, I think it actually took them, you know, because I think Halloween didn't, like it says it's 1978 as a release date, but I don't mm-hmm. think it came out everywhere at the same time. We're used now to a movie comes out on a weekend everywhere right? on one weekend. But back then, that that phenomenon was new to like Star Wars, Carrie, and the Omen. Or, uh, sorry, Star Wars, the Omen, and Jaws. Jaws, Jaws I yeah. think, was the first one. So these movies kind of opened regionally and then rolled out across the United States. So Halloween right. was seen throughout 1978 to probably 1980 by a majority of the country, uh, you know, that wasn't on the coast. Right. Now and, that felt like that was like a year long endeavor. Yeah. Like that just kept going. It, you just kept seeing it or like, yeah. you know, you heard about it maybe right. and then it would come to your town eventually. Right. Um, but in that period of time, all the Hollywood producers obviously saw it. And because of the money it was raking in, right? They said, "Well, we got to we do this. Go make copies of this." Yeah. And so the first thing that they decided to copy was the idea of uh, a horror film that takes place on a holiday. Yes. <laughs> what a brilliant idea! God yeah. bless them. And this, it's so many holidays ripe for the picking. Yeah, but why? You go like, why? Why is that a thing? I mean, I get right. Halloween because it right, because that's a, a creepy holiday, right? Mm-hmm. So what? Like, this, what's inherently creepy about you know Valentine's Day? But shit? I, at the, I like the thing I love about Christmas horror movies, and I wish there was more. Is I love the idea of people being killed at like the happiest time of the year. Sure, that I like because the juxtaposition yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. ironic. It's yeah, close, right. right. Yes. Yeah. And it's like it's supposed to be a happy family time, but somebody's out there killing. Mm-hmm. Right. And one of the earliest movies, I think that, uh, well, it was Black Christmas, right? I was going to say Christmas <laughs> Evil was also 1980. But you seen that movie? No. no. It's Let's weird. It's not really a slasher movie. It's like the fucking taxi driver of uh, horror movies. It's really <laughs> You're watching a man break down and eventually, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that sounds great. It. It's actually a pretty good movie. I'll be damned. Well, well, as always, next year. Yeah. One day we'll watch this. So by uh, 1980, these films that had been made between 1979 and 1980 started to come out. And you had, uh, I mean, we're talking holidays where New Year's Evil is definitely, I'd say, a holiday. Yes. But it's prom official. night. Right. Is now now they're just looking for events. Graduation day. We're Specific looking things. for events with big groups of people together. <laughs> right. Basically. Yeah. yeah. Also, where like, I mean, when you get to like prom night and graduation, like teenagers, because you got to get the teenager element in there. So looking for big teenager. You know, as I've things. been thinking about this, Sean, this is the thing that I think made this particular era unlike uh, the the Italian giallo, for instance, okay. the giallo. We're not going after forty year old men and their shit and everything. Yeah, because yeah. the giallo is about like adults mm-hmm. and yeah. primarily like you know upscale up upper class adults like being you know stalked. But the right. thing that it added to the who done it kind of uh, plot uh, contrivance was it added a little bit of graphic gore that you wouldn't see in Hollywood films of the 1970s. Mm-hmm. If somebody got their throat slashed, chances were in a Jalo movie, you'd see it. You'd right. see the impact of the knife going into right. the body. That was like, what? In a little bit, you know, the blood spurting or whatever. And We're looking at you, Tenebrae. Was, yeah. Talking about blood spray. Uh, so, but the, the, the American slasher movie typically involves teenagers. Yes. Teenagers were the primary audience and teenagers went out every week because I guess the idea was we're going to go and get scared or something Mm -hmm. or you saw that yourself. Yeah. I suppose you're a teenage viewer and you go to these movies and they're made for you. And ironically, they're about like you getting slashed and killed and, you know, burned, maimed and, you know, (laughs) all across the, uh, you know, the scope of wherever it takes place in a high school or takes place in the woods and it takes place in a summer camp or takes place in a mine. Yeah. Mm, Fucking mines. Um, So this is why I guess, you know, so coming back to uh, and we also have to pay special mind to Jamie Lee Curtis, because not only was she the star of Halloween, but she was also the star of both um, Prom Night and Terror Train. Mm -hmm. Uh, Terror Train also being a New Year's Eve set uh, slasher film. I didn't know that. Those two, they came out, I think, like in September and November of 1980. Okay. Uh, This came out in December. Okay. I mean, there was, in 1980, there was a one a month. In 1981, it was like, it, it was closer <laughs> grouping than that. Yeah. And then she was in uh, uh, Halloween 2 the right. following year. Um, so I guess what I'm coming back to is, is this a slasher movie? 
um, because of everything that we were just talking about, <laughs> does New Year's Evil uh, ascribe to this, you know, uh, structure? I would say no. Officially, I would say no. It does not feel to me like a slasher movie. It's missing several key elements. It's missing the inciting incident. Right? Sure. Yeah. A slasher film usually has something that happened in the past that sets the killer off. It's right. uh, this is what it shares with the giallo. There's some kind of thing that happened when the killer was young, or that just happened last week, right. or some kids did something and you know messed him up, and now he's coming back for revenge, or mm-hmm. you know he's off his rocker. No. New Year's Evil doesn't have that. It, this has a long story. As yeah. to why he's crazy and why he's doing this, yeah. apparently, which we get in a uh, mono, uh, elevator monologue as he's sitting there with his wife. Spoiler <laughs> twist, <laughs> plot twist. There is a pretty good point. Which I did not see that movie. coming. This is the. I think that's the hook of this movie. I that's think so. probably the only thing that you don't see coming. Um, so the Okay, so the story of this film, the setup, uh, it's New Year's Eve, 1980. And the Blaze, or what's her name? Blaze? Blaze, yeah. She's Blaze. Who's played by Roz Kelly, that some of you may remember as Pinky Tescadero from Happy Days. That was Fonzie's girlfriend. Uh, really? Is, yes. That's her? I'll be damned. There you go. I do know Pinky Tescadero. <laughs> <laughs> well, she is. So how would you describe Blaze? Who's Blaze? She's a woman. That helps, Sean. <laughs> well, she's I'm doing like, my best. She's like an 80s, like television personality right who hosts like a ryan seacresty dick clark style uh hollywood hotline that's what it's called with lips hollywood let me ask you this question because like she's done up her costume is basically a glittery uh i mean because the glitter was the thing in the 80s Mm -hmm. yeah glitter or whatever uh it's a red glitter dress mm-hmm. is a strapless it turns into a jumpsuit yeah turns into a jumpsuit well, well, in the she's third wearing act one yeah. thing before which is like a, a sherbet swirl type dress looking thing going yeah. on. It, that's what it felt like to me <laughs> With and then she changes nets, later yeah. into uh a sparkly sequin type jumpsuit apparently it turns so into a gross sleeve of fashion is what you're saying for like <laughs> at the time i assume yes she yeah. also wears a dog collar which i thought was an yeah. interesting uh mm-hmm. makes her hair is all poofed out red. flaming red yeah mm-hmm. and the, the painted cheekbones the, okay so what's going on with that bowie is that what it is that that's where like it comes bowie. from yeah it feels like like you said we mentioned during the movie it feels like ziggy stardust a yeah. little influence in there because and why not and this is a thing that I guess distinguishes New Year's Evil from its contemporaries. The New fashion. Year's Evil is set in the world of new wave uh, rock and roll or pop music because Blaze is like, I think she's like a top 40, uh, you know, like the Casey Kasem or something mm-hmm. like that. Really? A radio host because she, well, she's simulcasting on her radio station, I think. Mm. That's why she's popular. Right. And, and she's they are also, on TV. Yeah. So she's doing the uh, the California time, um, Pacific time, New Year's Eve celebration, right? In a ballroom, and she's also tapped in via <laughs> in si- satellite. In a, it's the ballroom at the Holiday in Inn. In a room at the Holiday Inn, mm-hmm. because this is where you. Well, do that's it. very mm-hmm. true. That's very true. Uh, with a bunch of um, punkers as the. Uh, Amazing the, 80s street toughs. Right. Uh, I, the credits these, would have you know. The, yeah, the people in the in the opening uh, title sequence driving the down the street, ride. drinking and smoking, sitting on the back of a car. You know, what a life. Why did I miss? I was gonna say, I'm mad. I missed this shit? time. It, it's the same feeling I have. So when I watch Grease and they're all sitting on the back of the convertible, drinking and smoking and eating pizza in the back of the car as they're driving down the street, yeah. I'm like, man, what a time to I know. live. You no know? seat belts. Yeah, no. like you could drink. And you had no idea car. how terrible all of that was for you. You know, like, yeah, I want to live in that, that naivety, you know? Yeah. like before, before MAD, the Mothers Against Drunk yeah. Driving, like, ruined it for everybody. But these these 80s street toughs, man, they're like they're like the street toughs from the Wraith, you know? That's yeah, what they, they remind they're me they're of. They're all a bunch of skanks. They're all over the top growling and spitting <laughs> and really just, are. like, their personality is being new abrasive. Wave culture, like that's uh, what I'm like. I what? can't. You keep bringing this up. I cannot identify. I couldn't identify if new wave. I didn't live through any of this, so I have no so idea. I have no idea. <laughs> well, new wave. Because that's why I don't know either. But I you think could you're say something new wave. Like, like, oh yeah, sure. Well, the Love cars. It. The cars. I think is like new wave music. Uh, I have Devo? no idea. Okay, De- okay. Devo, Devo sounds yeah. new wave. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. The cars really. 
No, the Cars. Okay. I mean, I know uh, like a Cars song, maybe. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know much about the Cars. And uh, like Gary Newman or Bauhaus, but they may be. I see. So I, I don't know where New Wave crosses with punk, crosses with like goth. Because right. I think there was like goth. I'm like, where's Skinny Puppy on that like slider? Is that that's, you know, that's, that's like that's an end. Yeah, like sushi we get the and the banshees. The is yeah. that new wave or is that sushi yeah, okay. and the banshees? Yeah, uh, what are these words? <laughs> okay, no idea. No, this was not my era. All right then. Well, from what you heard in this <laughs> film, which is full of music, full. packed from beginning to end, indeed, new wave music from the shadows and uh, what was the other main Japan? Main Japan. Yeah. See, I think this is the thing. Like, this is the new wave movie, even though they couldn't afford to actually get real acts, right? Because I think we hear the title song, which is appropriately called New Year's Evil, mm-hmm. at least three times least during three the times. course mm-hmm. of this film. Yes. Uh, performed live at least once, um, where Prom Night is a movie that's very much of the disco era. Right. Because oh, yeah. when they go to the, the prom at the end of it, it's like it's disco, like mm-hmm. all fucking you know, coming through the walls and shit. Mm-hmm. So Prom Night's a disco movie. Uh, this is the new wave movie. We're breaking that down. So did New Wave come right after Disco? Or was there? Yeah, it was probably a reaction to Disco. Reaction right? to Disco. Yeah, punk, that's punk those music guys and New Wave were, a reaction were reacting to, disco. to something. Yeah. Do, do you guys not remember when they blew up all those Disco records at like the baseball field in the seventies? Right. There was like an anti-Disco thing, thing, thing where they were like, "We're gonna kill Disco." It was because yeah. like Disco Duck was like a big oh, song. Oh, Disco Duck. This was right after Disco Duck. People yeah. were like, "We've had enough." The fact that like Disco Duck is a top forty the song. Fuck is Disco Duck? You've never heard oh, Disco, yeah, Duck? Disco Duck? Holy Jesus. shit! Disco is like an amazing American phenomenon. Oh, I want to. Around it's a, the world, know, but yeah. it yeah, probably a fascinating for like phenomenon. A Interesting. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it got so bad that there is like a like a Donald like imagine if Donald Duck wrote a disco song. That's what Disco Duck is. Um and it was like a top 40 song and that's wow. when people had decided they had had enough and they yeah. took a bunch of disco records in the middle of a f- fucking baseball field I think Just on the east coast somewhere them. and blew them all up. Yeah. Uh, right. Like, Wasn't there a pile? Yeah, there was a up? giant yeah, pile blew that blew up. Okay. Yeah. It feels like we talked about like the guy who wrote probably this I feel like we did. I'm sure I've brought up Disco Duck yeah. before. This is where we should be taking notes. <laughs> disco Duck. I, I don't want to know about Disco Duck. Oh, you're, you're going to find out off mic after this is over what Disco <laughs> Duck oh, yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Disco Duck. I'm, well, I might have to research Disco. Yeah, I something I know nothing oh, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Well, because even like Kiss is a hard rock group, right, but they yeah. have a Disco right. song. Like everybody eventually yeah. dabbled. Everyone you know. got in there, yeah, yeah, a little bit. So the plot of this film is basically, so uh, Blaze is hosting live her like a New Her Year's countdown. Eve countdown yeah. program, uh, and there she gets a phone call from evil. the killer, evil, evil, That's who evil. uses a uh, voice um, camouflaging thing. It's to like make Peter it Frampton, like, but not as cool. Mm-hmm. It's the Phantom of the the Paradise. It, Is it? It's because really hard to not says, laugh at it. <laughs> that why she calls him the Phantom. Yeah, the Phantom. Okay. Yeah. Right? Is it's it, really hard to not laugh at it because it sounds so fucking stupid. Right. Yeah, ah, give, us, give us a little bit of. Uh, I can't do it. I can't. It's. <laughs> it sounds incredibly I'm vague. I'm going to kill them. Mm-hmm. I can't. Uh, just. Uh. My name is Evil. Right. Yeah. When he's saying it, he sounds like just an exaggerated like Doctor Evil. Yeah. 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 It's pretty much. Thing. It's weird because he's got to do big mouth. Like blah, blah, blah to you know get that voice going. It's weird. But this movie, it's weird. It's strange that it's strange only because strange. I guess I'm grading it against other slasher. Films, sure, right. That it's basically a two handed movie where there is in one corner uh, Blaze mm-hmm. and in the other corner the killer. Right. And where do they meet? In the and middle? where do they meet? There yeah. is also, I mean, the subsidiary, subsidiary characters. You say that the, the secondary characters. You've got. You, you uh, can just say secondary. Well, there's a plot that we're probably the subplot that we're probably most interested in involves uh, her son. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember what his name was. Because she doesn't either. Mm, that's very right. Yes, oh, mom, fuck. I have no idea what his name is. Do they even out. say his name? I think oh, so. yeah, they did. It's like Paul or something. Because he's Richard. Right. He's the, the, the wow, killer is Richard more than I do. I don't names don't stick. Yeah, but it's played by Grant Kramer, who's on his way to the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. <gasps> oh, no. no, yeah, we've seen him before. He, he looks was in familiar. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Right. Oh, uh, was he? Yeah, right. He's like Jeff Tobacco or Fred Tobacco. <laughs> 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 right. Jeff Tobacco. <laughs> what the fuck his name was? <laughs> Fucking Jeff Tobacco. <laughs> yeah. 
Wasn't he the Derek. cop? He was Derek. Derek. Okay, so Derek the son. Uh, okay, so this is the setup of the movie. Ra- uh, uh, Blaze is getting ready to do her show. Her manager's trying to calm her down. You know, it's like, you're going to have a great show. And her son. I'm surprised he wasn't slipping her drugs. Right? At some point. Because this is like, the, you a, need a quail. Yeah, something. That's what you yeah. would, yeah. Take at that point what you would think at that point. Yeah. Uh, Take some muscle relaxers sure, real quick. Yeah. Right. Which was just quail. Like, they quail like everything. It's just all quail right. loots. Yeah. You need an upper or a downer. I right. I think is where it went. And then, uh, so her son Reds has been, he's, a, he's an actor. He's very proud of the fact that he's just been cast in the TV show Spaceship America. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to know what that was. Sounds it's like a very generic. Star Galactica. Spaceship yeah. America. Um, and it's not a real thing. I hate to break. No, it. I know. Okay. No, I just I want. How could it to you? Be. <laughs> but uh, Blaze is extremely dismissive of him. Doesn't seem to. Uh, you know, she's. Uh, well, I mean, obviously, she has a lot in her head. She's got to. Right. You know, uh, put on the show right. tonight. She's going to be performing yeah. in front of millions of people. I will say, maybe save that information there, kiddo. Like you know, she's fucking busy. Not to not to defend her because she pretty much ignores him, ignores her son throughout uh, this movie and probably his life. I mean, but damn, big, maybe not give that information. It's a like, big right deal, now. though. It like, is. You're, you're being like, cast in like a network TV series. Like, they're it's a big do, deal. They're gonna do dinner after the show. Maybe yeah. wait till then. You can get the proper. You know, didn't he ask her to dinner and she said she didn't have time? Wasn't that the whole conversation yeah, they had? She said later. She's like, "We'll see you at dinner after the yeah, show." Yeah, dinner so, after the show. Right. Yeah, t- you, wait, you, so what? They're gonna go to dinner at like two a.m. I guess so. It's 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 fucking. They're on up. Uppers, okay, yeah. <laughs> they'll make it. Well, they may be on uppers, but their audience down in this ballroom on the Hollywood Hotline. I don't know what this is. Or zombies. They're just zombies. I I don't even think you can call what they're doing moshing because moshing, like in my experience, is a lot more shoving. A and lot more shoving. They're just kind of like jumping up and down next to each other. And you know, banging shoulders. and like they're like, yeah, it's like a lot of shoulder like right. m- motions and going, contact, uh, but like there's no shoving yet. And like yeah. they're just. They're experiencing, Colin. This yeah. Is what I feel is going we on. There's a, there's a sensory out. experience right. happening. What is the drug, which we are pretty sure that all these extras were actually on in real life? Because they all look straight into the camera yeah. every time. Oh, they every are time. out of their yeah. heads. Yeah, it feels real. But it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I like the idea that the zombie like is the only way that you can really mm-hmm. describe their right. behavior. They're kind of some moments they're just like, uh, uh, eyes half closed. They yeah. look very tired, but mm-hmm. they're just moving on. And, you know, residual energy right. bumping into each other at some point going uh, what looked like maybe crowd surfing without the crowd. Right. Just, just jumping just off, jumping off, off things. platforms and landing because this is uh, what was fun to do while you're on PCP <laughs> or Angel Dust or whatever the hell. <laughs> Describe your experiences, Colin. Uh, I'm asking the listener. <laughs> uh, for those of you who were, who were part partaking of, that, yeah. of this. Uh, yeah. Oh, in- please let us know. Just send us your drug stories. I, yeah. I, that's, that's good mail. <laughs> I'll read yeah. that. I feel like I could smell what it smelled like in there you know sweat sweat oh, and like yeah. but like like this like latex sweat you know what i'm saying because like everyone was wearing like you know pleather and like latex and uh, gross you things say that- latex sweat and the only thing i can think of is fucking hardware <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's, i like i like that that movie keeps coming it up. does it keeps coming back it, you know hardware. what i think it's it made me feel things it made me feel disgusted <laughs> is what is that movie keeps coming up i had so many feelings for that movie but like everyone's wearing skin tight stuff out yeah. of non-breathable material in an already and sweaty rubbing, environment and rubbing, rubbing on each blah, other blah, blah, blah. and like Ugh, just yeah. and we ugh. keep cutting back to them like so Constantly. many goddamn times. It's like this. This is my problem with the movie. It's like your Hollywood Hotline show mm. is not terribly interesting. No, does she make this? Is the it shouldn't because, be a show. It should just be a radio show. That's all. It shouldn't be a television show. Well, they're taking there's nothing requests. to fucking show. But there's their, no. The the there's too. no. Uh, yeah, they talk on the phones, and this is where they get the phone call from Evil. Yes, who threatens to. I'm going to kill someone close to you. And then he sets off murdering someone in each time zone, which would be cooler if he was actually in each time zone and driving across the country or flying or something. I don't so think that's possible. Everyone in the hour. Right. He's yeah. got to catch a flight every time. Yeah, no. that's what, that's that's where I'm, as soon as they brought that into the mix, I was like, uh, that's not possible. Is there yeah. some way you could do it if you're on like in Colorado or something? You're like, trying to find like the you, closest time zone. Yeah, you kill someone like on this time, like right on across the border. Still, yeah. You still only get Central, Mountain, and right. Pacific. Yeah, you, you wouldn't get Eastern. You still yeah. wouldn't get Eastern. 
Yeah. It's but strange. it's kind of nice because it well it builds up to even the one still, he's going for in like, his time zone. So you know it kind of even still that would still be like six hours of driving at least, right? You know. And would you want to yeah. watch that movie? I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> would you want to just? Uh, I want well, twenty minutes of him suspense. in a car. Is he going to make it to? But I guess they do that. Sure. He's well, that's in, he's doing that. He's in L.A. with uh, right. or North Hollywood. Again, with, we put one but, him at one side and her at the other, okay. and they're getting there. Why does it have to be across time zones? Why can't it just be a slasher movie on New Year's Eve? in New York where the ball drops you know the biggest fucking New Year's event like in the world pretty much yeah. but no we're not going to touch on that at all in this movie we're going to skip right 80s, past that and we need some fucking neon shit in this movie <laughs> yeah. we need some music I'm sure New York was all fucking neon in the 80s like it I, uh, I can't neon believe neon was everywhere yeah man. neon was the thing he had yeah but they were in, in LA I can't easier believe, to do in LA I can't believe they skipped the, the, the biggest like New, New Year's Eve event, yeah. maybe in the world, they like said they went with entirely in this Aspen. movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Where we saw those people skiing down the mountain, holding yeah. lights. What was that? Was like, awesome. What was that? <laughs> and cool that you do these things. And if you're from Colorado. Aspen and you do yeah. that, please tell us because I don't think right. you really do. It's cool for the people in Aspen. Thing. I don't want to watch. I that think shit. they yeah. must have done it probably in the '80s. But yeah. I mean, that was. Maybe real. they're doing that it now. That was real what footage. Yeah, like yeah. I'm pretty oh, yeah, sure they yeah, just yeah. got footage from a news. You place. light a torch. You go down the slopes. Down the slopes. All these people going down the slopes one by one with the fucking torch and high as something. Fuck. Yeah, high as they assume. have Hopefully. to. This is a prerequisite for Otherwise, any New that? Year's Eve party. Activity, yeah. What's the point? That, what's the point of any of this, really? You know, <laughs> I, the more, <laughs> the more. Well, all right, you're getting to a different, <laughs> yeah, to a different like, level. <laughs> what's the point of saying know, goodbye to the past? And you kind of like by the skiing down a mountain with a light. In this movie, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't it's understand symbolic. any of the stupid rituals associated with New Year's. Well, what else? And can that's you do my in bigger problem with this movie. Yeah. You can only ski in Aspen. There's nothing else you can do. I'm just saying, like, what a weird focus for this movie. Like, let's, <laughs> like, sure. like, we, oh, yeah, we all know the iconic Aspen, Colorado tradition of skiing <laughs> down the problem. mountain with fucking care. lights. Why the fuck do we care yeah, about this? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'd never even heard of that activity, you, to be honest with you, no, before this. And then, no was, one has. Uh, yeah, it's like we're gonna we're gonna patch into New York and Times Square, patch into Chicago, patch in, patch into Aspen, Colorado, like, what? and patch into an art show in the ballroom of the Holiday Inn <laughs> in, Los, in Angeles. Los Angeles. I'm surprised. It's like one of these things is not like the other, folks. I'm like, why are we doing Aspen? <laughs> All right. Um, for for how fucking tone deaf this movie is, I'm surprised it didn't patch into Chicago and we're all throwing deep dish pizza into Lake Michigan, and yeah, that's our yeah. fucking New Year's tradition for as far as this movie goes. Awesome. Waste of pizza. <laughs> well, our, it place. makes about as much sense as skiing down a mountain holding a light for no reason. Well, if you have a mountain, you have why not to use it? Well, right. if we have a lake and we have pizza, why not throw the pizza into the lake? It's <laughs> the same fucking have? logic. This is a I'm saying that by the logic start. of this movie, that's sure. what they would think that's all Chicago is. Sure. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It was probably a thing. Yeah. All right. So, but this is where this movie defies categorization as a slasher film. Mm. I still believe probably I'm showing my hand. I think it still is a slasher movie, uh, but it's trying to be like a mist. It's not even a mystery. You see who this guy is. That's the other thing. Yeah. Right up. That's the front. big one. Just like, Unmasked. You know, yeah. He's he, a dude. He right has an obvious villain face too. Like there's no doubt. It's like, oh yeah, that's the yeah, guy. He's got like, no lips. Uh, uh, he kind of looks like Jim Carrey. He's Kip severe, Niven. severe. Kip Niven. What Star a great of, name. Uh, Magnum Force. I'm surprised. And Midway and several episodes. Oh, really? yes. Bonanza. Oh, yeah. well. Great. Cool. Kip Niven. Kip Niven. God. He's not like, related to David Niven. I don't know where the hell he came from. You know, he was on the show Alice. Alice is there. Alice? Here. Alice. Oh, yeah, really? He was on that. He okay. looks similar to the dude in 10 to Midnight. Kip Niven. That's why. This is it's, also why I'm going. It's the look. With, this is the serial killer yeah. look of the 1980s that they're all kind of interchangeable. And yeah. the guy from Angel. Yeah. Which we right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is really looks like the guy from Ten Midnight. Night. But yeah. Also, they also have that like longer hair. Yeah. This Angular generic, cheekbones. Uh, yeah. yeah. Serial killer of yeah. this era. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we're not talking about somebody necessarily in a mask. Right. So his. So he. Uh, all right, so basically this is what I think we need to talk about tonight. You decide what <laughs> order we're talking about. Because basically we've set up what's going on with Blaze. She's yep. hosting the show. A strange caller is calling in and telling her he is going to kill someone at each in each time zone at midnight. Right. And then there's what the killer is doing, and then yep. there's what her son is doing. Right. With These a, little, the, a little sideways with the cop. But that's included in her story. Right, yeah. Which basically she eventually gets police protection they're trying to we're going to track the call we're going to protect you blah blah right. blah blah because he's a real deal because he's killed people right we All found right. bodies so what do you want to start with you want to start with the son 
Or you I, don't start think we, with... I don't think we can start with the sun, but I have some questions about that guy. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it is the weirdest fucking it's... like side road in this yeah. adventure that we're taking. Tonight. And that guy's a bad actor too. You're talking about the star of Hard Bodies. Yeah. <laughs> And, he, he can't swallow <laughs> pills, apparently. We no. learned that really, yeah. right he's, away. Want, he's like, I don't want to do drugs. I can't do this. Don't make me swallow them. You know, camera. if you're an actor and you can't swallow pills, close your mouth. It's really yeah, that he, simple. Yeah. Really, close there your mouth. A scene where he's starting taking some drugs and he just doesn't swallow them. It doesn't put them under his tongue. Doesn't Nothing. do anything. No, they're just, just in there. They're we can just see in his mouth. Red pills. Yeah. So they're yeah. and they're big. Yeah. There's yeah. three of them. We can just see them sitting in his mouth was the whole he scene. Trying to, we were trying to figure out what he was doing in this scene because he calls his mom. Mom, I got something really important. I got to tell you. Yeah. Which do we know when he was going to? Uh, this is why we have to wait until later to I, talk about this. Well, I was going to say. Right. I'm like, like yeah. we said, no, nah, I don't want to start with this. And we're like, let's go into this. He started with. This but it, anyway. we, only because it's so f- <laughs> weird. It's, it's so, so weird. It's so weird. It's like the, the the thread that's most worth discussion because we're like, wow, we have no answers for it. <laughs> All right, so let's, All let's, right, let's, so let's put this on pause. Yeah, we're gonna we'll jump back in and it. we're gonna talk about the killer. So in the yes. first time zone, Eastern Pacific Standard Time, uh, what 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 is this guy up to? Where is that at? the nurse? nurse. This nurse. Okay. okay. He meets a nurse in the hallway at a hospital and he's pretending he's dressed like a doctor and offers her champagne. They get drunk out of paper cups and start to fuck and then he stabs her. Yeah, I think so. Straight, he, straight, so he, midnight. he makes a phone call. That's the first time we see him, right? Yes. He makes the phone call. He makes the phone call, but I don't think you see him clearly. It's when right. he he's comes got into the cap on. dressed as a doctor into right. the sanitarium. Uh, that's when we first see who he is. Uh-huh. We're like, okay, this looks like a regular dude. Yeah, yeah. So kind of creepy, dude. Nurse, yeah. and then murders her in cold blood, stabs her a couple times. What about on the countdown? This is also where Records we're it. looking at a deviation from the slasher film formula. Uh, no makeup effects, heavy murders. Right. No, we see yeah. the aftermath of some of these. You see a lot of the hand raising in the air, and right? That's and it. Shadows and whatnot, and you hear it, but no, we don't see anything. We don't see any. Uh, uh, what should we call it? No Killer's pun- no, no specialized no. weapon is what? Switchblade. Mm-hmm. Okay, it does have a switchblade. It does go. have a switchblade. Yep. One of the few uh, serial killer movie, movie serial killers to wield Not the switchblade. most threatening weapon right. as far as slashers go. Really right. not. No. Yeah, you big know? butcher knife is hard to beat. Yeah. I mean, unless you yeah. have a chainsaw. Sure. Yeah. That's probably mm-hmm. like, you know. Right. But get him, rips get him a you into pieces. You know? Right. That's Yeah, yeah that's uh, it's not, mm-hmm. not doing a lot of slashing. Yeah, a pair of scissors would be pretty disturbing. This looks like half a, scissor. especially those long shears. Yeah, the long use in scissors. The fashion, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at shear, you. shear murders. Look That's at more you, us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're getting and it right. That uh, mm-hmm. like every Dario Argento movie. Sure. Yeah. Um. So the he kills a, a woman at midnight at random, right? right. Mm-hmm. And he records the murder and then plays it back on the air because he's Blake. constantly traveling with a boombox. <laughs> Well, that's why you small had stereo, that. right? What do you got? You don't have. He a doesn't. Did they have not? What, did they not have like little cassette recorders back in the day? He's got to go he, with a. I don't know. I think have they to look did. Did you 1980? have? Hello, nineteen eighty listener. Are you listening? Uh, did you have <laughs> right micro older. cassette recorders in nineteen eighty? I feel like they did. If you know what? I don't. Um, I'm more hung up on a different thing in the scene. I'm more <laughs> hung up on the fact that between nineteen eighty and like ninety five, ninety six. Every horror movie felt the need to call into a radio station at some point. Like, this movie did it. Texas Chainsaw 2 did it. Halloween 5, maybe 6 did it. The Fog did yeah, it, why Why do they always have to call into a radio station? Why Why is that Martin a thing? Did it in 1977. Yeah. That was a slasher movie, but that, yeah. Hmm. I mean, that was, why? I, that's because you get that, it's that public thing where it's, people are listening to it it's it it makes uh it brings more attention to it i guess i don't know it feels more public because it always ends up like you hear it over the radio so you, it you feel like something's happening something's going wrong it depends i think in I each know. one of those you know uh examples that we mentioned the motivation for why the radio station's being called is different yeah but yeah i suppose it's because i think well, I mean, obviously, in that period of time, radio is probably a bigger deal than it is now. Now everybody listens to you listen to your own 
music when right. you're in the car. Mm-hmm. You know, or you listen to satellite radio. Mm-hmm. It's not so much the free over the airwaves stuff. So I think it was just a thing of public life. It's like this is the thing everybody can relate to the radio. Right. Yeah, but the weird the thing is, in some cases, it's the killer calling in, and other times, it's the victim. And that's right. what doesn't like. There's no. Yeah, well, it's that's not what you're consistent. Saying. It's like it feels, yeah, it's different. It's different. It's yeah, like it's utilized, but it's like for different reasons. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it went on for a long time. Like 15 years of movies, we were doing that. <laughs> well, I mean, well radio, radio was the big thing. Yeah. But what you want to look at, Michaela, when you're looking at, you want to look at, find out the CB movies about the CB era. <laughs> what they were doing. Because before there were chat rooms on the internet, Joyride. there was CBs. Oh, no, no, no. I'm talking <laughs> Smokey and the Bandit oh, yeah. and Convoy and shit. Like All right, Convoy. That. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know. Call back and everybody's like, <laughs> Convoy, that's right. I got to go watch that movie again. We're going on a convoy. We're okay. on a great big convoy. That's how it goes. Yep. Um, so this guy uh, murders this uh, murders uh, a, nurse. a nurse at the sanitarium. Then he uh, heads on over to pick up, he, like puts on a fake a porn stash and goes right. to a swinging club to pick up a couple of girls. Well, he's after one, but he picks right. up a couple of girls. Uh, and a bag of weed is used as a murder <laughs> weapon. But when it, you say bag of weed, it is like a giant bag with a tiny bit of weed like yeah, down in the corner. Like, <laughs> like it's not like a Ziploc baggy, like mostly full of weed. It is like a giant. It's like more it's more than a gallon size. It's a big bag. Yeah, but yeah, there should yeah. It can I'm fit a over your head. Legal yeah. law abiding citizen, Michaela. I don't know what size bags weed comes in. Maybe it comes in big like ten gallon bags. It's not potato chips. You don't need to cushion <laughs> yeah, there. Saying, I'm also yeah. a law abiding yeah. citizen. And it does not come yeah, in a bag yeah. that big. It's, it's not potato chips. You don't need to cushion that shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right, yeah. yeah. Oh, look at this yeah. little weed yeah. in here. Yeah. The, well, we're talking about a bag that is, this is like a uh, turkey uh, yeah, bag. Yeah, it's huge. Because yeah. it's got can, no, like, there's no like, zip lock. Zip lock or anything. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. you got to be able to fucking, uh, this is, you're going to uh, suffocate a person with this right. bag. This goes over the human head. Yeah, and this is when the the uh, leaning on Black Christmas got to be too much for me because we already had like the harassing phone calls mm-hmm. uh, being like the setup for all the right. you know the first girl got suffocated. Yeah, bag, and right? yes, okay. in a better way though yeah. because like in Black Christmas you actually see like the plastic go into her mouth right. and like she, it's yeah, yeah. Breathes it this looks one, real. She is for it, the rest yeah. of the movie. feels yeah. like she has her own air supply. In right, the fucking it's like she's bag. In a, yeah she's got a helmet on. Yeah. of air. At it's this not point. that bad in this movie. It's like eh, yeah. no. where Black Christmas. It's pretty horrible. Well, I thought the nurse's death was also underwhelming because yeah. a lot of it. I think it was in shadow. You see yeah, the, yes. the, the silhouette. Sil- yeah, of yeah. The, the the switchblade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And then you see her slit throat. Then the uh, this woman is killed in the car, and then he also kills her friend, which was like a weird. Uh, like why right. is this That's going a weird, on for so like, long? Because <laughs> he he kills her, and then the friend comes back out from the liquor store, and she finds like a heel, and then another heel. The car's she, gone. The car's the, gone. The murder, the murder scene is gone. Right. Why doesn't he just go away? Right. Well, and like this is the second time like someone has like followed his trail by the shoes that were left behind. Pick up the goddamn shoes, dude. This yeah. is the well, second time he's, he's doing it on purpose to lure shoes. her there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the to the fucking dumpster where he's hiding in a dumpster. I know. And this is the, the if you look up images from this movie, you're going to find a shot of a mustachioed guy with a cigarette lighter looking straight into the camera. It is this shot. She opens the lid of the dumpster. He's hiding in there. And he apparently drags her into the I'm like, I'm not even sure what happened. No. And this is the weirdest thing. He was in a car, right? With two girls. He only wanted to kill one. He gives one a hundred dollar bill, pulls over to liquor station or liquor station, liquor store, <laughs> says, Go in and buy us a bottle of booze while you're in there. I'm gonna kill your friend. I'm gonna record it. Job's done. Right. But then I'm gonna drive away. I'm gonna park my because car. I'm gonna hide it somewhere. Him. I'm gonna jump into a garbage dumpster <laughs> out behind the liquor store. I'm gonna leave like your you friend's shoes. Uh, like a little it's trail a lot of, of breadcrumbs. It's intricate, <laughs> you have to, to say up. the least. <laughs> so He's betting on a lot of things the happening where I'm hiding to pounce at you. Right, so, not even just to pounce, but just to like creep her out with a lighter <laughs> and his weird yeah. face. First Surprise. of all, yeah, then kill her. When uh. when they're they're driving to the liquor store, the three of them in the car together, and she won't shut up about the most like uh, <laughs> menial, about, dumb right. shit that just doesn't matter. Yeah, like and then a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, is that to make her? 
unlikable so we don't care that she gets killed was that the whole point of that or was it padding for time it i you know i was like what is the point of this i was like i get it she's annoying i get it like i don't know because he finds he finds her annoying as well yeah He's drumming on things but he was gonna kill her whether she was annoying yeah, or not yeah, it didn't matter if she was annoying it didn't, yeah. matter, it didn't matter yeah. but why to keep doing that i don't know yeah yeah because it keeps and this is the thing i guess that makes the movie quasi interesting is usually in these films you don't really get any kind of insight into what the killer the killer is a force of nature generally Mm -hmm. in a lot of these slasher movies they show up they have murder on the mind they kill you this guy actually has to figure out how to kill these people because uh you know there's various um um environmental issues that <laughs> right you know, depending on where he is yeah, yeah. are keep coming up like you know he was going to kill the girl and invited her out her and then friend her friend came, came along. along and like so then he has to adapt his strategy to deal with like you know uh, this is the reality that you're presented with and so you see him being upset by the fact that she just won't shut up right. he can't kill her because her friend's in the car right and i think is that's supposed the thing. to be funny i don't know i don't think it is I don't know. I mean, when you say that out loud, it's like, okay, I can see how that could be humorous. Mm-hmm. It didn't come off really, that way. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it's supposed to be that way. Because we are sitting there going like, well, I know he is planning to kill this uh, this innocent right. woman, mm-hmm. you know? And I, yeah, it's not, um, uh, maybe not they a funny were going thing. For, maybe they were going for it. It's like, ah, see, he can't do it because the friend's with. <laughs> yeah. Well, then after he kills both of them and hangs them on swings in somebody's back. Right. That's right. He dresses like a priest. Hangs one on a swing, pushes the other one down a slide. Right. Right. Well, I don't one. think he pushed her. I think she, well, uh, How did she fall gravity. perfectly as it just, was time? It's one of those things cops where somebody's up. just on the precipice. Yeah. And they will fall. What but timing? Just inertia. Inertia the, is going to bring them yeah, down. The cop disturbed the, disturbed the right. air. His oh, footstep right, right. near that slide knocked her down. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. So then he so dresses going as a priest. You hurt your arm with that reason? For a minute. I'm not entirely positive. He has a uh, book on the front passenger seat of his car. Yeah. Uh, where what is it this? looks like he is going to target a nun who we have not met in the movie. We don't know who no. the fuck this is. He's got a priest and a nun uh, in a book. Right. In a large book, there are giant pictures in there. And he's dressed as a priest. He wears glasses. And So he's on his way somewhere, mm-hmm. but he yeah. gets sidetracked. For his next victim. He yeah. gets sidetracked by a gang of bikers. Bikers. Because you just can't like plan on anything to do when there's bikers in town mm-hmm. who start like yelling at him because he looks like a priest. Yeah. And then uh, because he's thinking about like the next kill he's going to make, he accidentally rear ends one of the bikers, which then brings them after him. And this yep. is the most bizarre, one of the most bizarre departures from the slasher film formula is that all of a sudden now our killer is on the run because he's being chased by a bunch of bikers <laughs> right. while we're going like, well, he's, he needs to make his next kill right. at uh, 12 midnight or whatever. This would be 11. This I think it was the, the, the 11, the mountain time. Yeah, I think so. Uh, murder. This is the Aspen murder. The Aspen murder. <laughs> right. So he takes, uh, he hides out in a movie theater, at a drive-in movie theater. The bikers follow him in. Right. It's an elongated sequence. Yeah. We're we're like, this is the point where we don't cut back to anybody else for quite a while, it feels like. What is the movie doing here is my question. Because they're fucking up his thing, but I'm just like, okay, so they're fucking up his thing. Like, it doesn't make it interesting that we're we're deviating from what it feels like they set out to do. He's going to murder all these people leading up to murdering her. And but it gets messed up in that way, and then we go on a little tangent with him, like it feels like we lost. We were off track of the movie, like yeah. what this movie's supposed to be. It's New Year's Evil. He's supposed to be killing people on the New Year's, and it feels like we really went off of that. Well, here's what I am proposing that they're doing. I don't know if it's successful. I think, much like Psycho, it is trying to get you to identify with the killer in a way that you are like, well, I understand what his objective is, mm-hmm. that he has to kill someone on every hour, and so then... Now, all of a sudden, he has to deal with shit that's not right. going to allow that to happen. So now we're a How race against time to... with the killer? Yes. Is this, this what so they're trying to do? You're supposed to be going like, oh, God, he's not going to make his murder. Oh, God, no, he needs to make his murder. you in right. the, the crime Okay, <laughs> as a viewer. Sure. But I'm like, I don't know if I was 
necessarily like, like with this guy right. yeah. because I don't know who the fuck he is really, right. except that he's running around uh, killing people and calling the radio station and playing back the tape and saying that he's doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he ends up like abducting a girl in a car mm-hmm. at the drive in and driving off with her. And then that is thwarted by a police officer uh, who appears via ADR uh, <laughs> to scare him off of the, the murder. I, I like that credit. Appears via ADR. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We don't want to see this guy. It's like, it's hey, amazing. hey, you. <laughs> I'm you a doing? police officer. <laughs> I'm a cop. Miss, are you okay? All of this done yep, uh, yep. by ADR. Which is weird because they had a cop. Like he was there. There were right. two of them. Not but, on that night, apparently. Well, apparently not. Yeah. Whenever the hell they shot this. So his next v- murder or plan. So he actually misses the mountain time murder. Right. And he goes to the uh, hotel where he dresses. No, sorry. How did he get in? He's there? a priest. And then no, he, he goes to out. the back. Right. Then he goes to the back to try and get in because he sees nobody's being let into the hotel right now. It's being locked down by the square cop who is working up in the uh, up in the ballroom area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so he decides to go try the back way. And then he sees two cops guarding the back way, and then he uh, calls one over. Where does the other one go? I one of them, one know. of them, like disappears, and, yeah. he, and then he calls him. It's like, hey, I think I've had a drunk over here. And the cop comes over, and then he nails him with a brick and so steals he his uniform. himself as a police officer. Yes. So this guy is constantly assuming uh, he's a doctor, he's a priest, he's a police officer. Mm-hmm. You know, he's always he's assuming a, different guys. He's a dude in a jogging suit. Yeah, and That's he was also last. like a lounge lizard. Is that right? right? Yeah. yeah, the mustache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so he's always assuming different personas, which I guess is you know, that is a staple of the uh, of the uh, the the slasher film genre. Yeah. And then he gets in, and he is able to uh, get next to Blaze because surprise reveal twist. He That's is crazy. her husband. Holy shit. I did not see this coming. <laughs> that was just like, what? Because we get a, a scene where uh, Blaze has to go upstairs to change for the rest of the show. And uh, he comes out wearing a, which we decided was a Richard Nixon mask. But I'm not I'm not deciding. It, I'm not sure. I think it, I've that, decided. It's got it's a very a, fa- high forehead. That's a Nixon mask. It's got a long It was nose. like a, a very caricature. caricature, yeah. It's a very caricature, but it's a Nixon mask. Because nobody else has that face with that big nose. That's Nixon. Okay. Mm-hmm. If, uh, well, if uh, whatchamacallit, Point Break has taught us anything. All right. <laughs> so that's a Nixon mask. But he comes out this and he's got the This is where the killer wears the, 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 the rubber mask. The right. only time. Yeah. Yeah. In the movie, which is, again, in some type of weird inversion of slasher movie cliches, mm-hmm. which hadn't even been codified yet because Friday the 13th came out in May. This mm-hmm. came out in December. Uh. So, yeah, Friday the 13th was a big hit. But this movie was in production prior to that, I I think. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is where we find out what the fuck the motivation is for this crime spree, mm-hmm. which is what? <laughs> this, is the you got me this is the elevator confession. Yeah. First of all, Richard was in a uh, husband. Oh, we keep yeah. They keep going. Richard is the husband and the killer. Yeah. Um. Let's not forget that we keep cutting back to the institution with the crazy people celebrating New Year's where with all the patients, apparently, which apparently right where he was a patient at one point. Yeah. Which is revealed in our little backstory there. Um. Which did did Blaze know this when she married him? I don't know. I don't know. But it's it revealed yes that he was a mental patient. Yes. This mental illness has apparently visited. Their son, yes, because the son, what's his name? Dexter. Derek. Derek. <laughs> he might as well be Dexter. He spends the entire film trying to. Well, I don't know if he's trying to kill himself. He's trying to get through to his mom. Mom ignores right. him. I have no idea what he's trying to do in this movie. I don't think he's trying to kill himself. He's just getting drugged up and like. But why is he wearing that weird, the like the like pantyhose does, and he shit? Wears a, and he puts a bunch of pantyhose on yeah. his head, like the red just. And before he puts it on, he face. says. I think I have a mental illness. Right, he's talking to himself. <laughs> he literally later. says that to himself. Like, he ends up later, like he acknowledges to his, his own mom, mental problems. Yeah, with he sunglasses, put, like, uh, yeah. needles, needles through his, his earlobes. So he's bleeding. All, and yeah. then he shows up in a scene where mom is talking to the police. Uh, nobody sees him in this, oh. so the scene has no consequence to anything. But no. we see uh, Derek show up, and he is wearing one of those sweet '80s visor sunglasses yeah. on top of his red pantyhose pulled yeah. over face with the ne- the nail the needles, needles in yeah. his uh, earlobes. Depends. And I'm like, 
he's going for some kind of crazy look here, but I yeah. don't understand why. <laughs> what a, is I think happening? I really think it's just a setup for the end of the movie. You could, What's the... Okay, all right. So I this is... That's where that goes. All right. So crazy husband eventually... Is, uh, is trying to kill his wife. That's what we end up... And because he doesn't like what Blaze is... Uh, he th- what he thinks is Blaze is doing to their son is trying to come on to their son, is trying to attract their son. This is his thoughts. Well, he also goes on a completely misogynistic. Yes, you know, very much is, so. This is what uh, slasher movies, part of the uh, argument against slasher movies, it was leveled at them, that they were misogynistic against women. Right. Granted, most of his uh, victims, instead, except the biker and the cop, right. I believe, are women. Yep. Uh, but he basically says that women are these evil, awful, horrible things that have screwed him over. She's just like them, and she's also doing that to... His uh, right, his to son. their son, yeah. So uh, he holds, a, well, he chains her to the bottom of an elevator. <laughs> that more uh, very elaborate, we'll say. Because <laughs> yeah. this guy's is this guy an electrical engineer at some point? Apparently he's, so. Because he's he, messing with. He rewired the whole elevator. Rewired the whole elevator. So he's got that again. Yeah, he attaches her to the bottom of an elevator. Sends her up. Sends her back down. Again, no consequence to this. I can't remember. Like, she was eventually found by somebody, but right. we don't see that happen. No. He's sent up, or she, sorry, she's sent up an elevator shaft. She's sent back down an elevator shaft. A shootout. He's cackling with glee as right. he's watching this. A shootout ensues. Between him and the police. Right. And then uh, he uh, leads them up to the roof. Yeah. Then he quotes Hamlet. And then he Puts jumps off the roof. And jumps off. Weird. Right? Weird. Yeah. Right to, yeah, I don't. Like, it's kind of end your movie. Because generally you want to see the protagonist take on the antagonist in, yeah. a, in a clash. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do appreciate the fact that movies have tried um, – experimenting with this formula Mm -hmm. and trying different things. Mm -hmm. And the reason I think that some of these tropes, you know, the, it's the beauty and the beast thing. It's always, you're going to have final girl versus evil killer because that is the best one. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. Yeah. We've tried all the other ones. (laughs) That's the best one. It is the most satisfying uh, version of that story, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, So this one, yeah. Killer kills himself. Because he's confronted by the police and yeah. jumps off the roof where he is splats all over the uh, the pavement kind and of not very gory scene. No. And his son, his mentally rubs, fragile son, rubs his cries face over yeah. his body and then takes his rubber Richard Nixon mask yeah. and dons it. So when they load uh, Blaze in the ambulance... Surprise, surprise, crazy son is in the driver's seat of the ambulance, cut to uh, the uh, cityscape and credits and New Year's Evil, the song, the which song kind of goes like how because Sean's the guy who sings these songs on our show and everybody loves it when you do it, Sean. <laughs> so that whole build up for me to say, I don't remember. <laughs> hey, New Year's Evil. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, sure, I can do that. No, I don't know. It was uh, it took him a while in the song to get to the New Year's Evil part. So yeah. I don't remember the build up. It's it's no uh, it's no uh, um, no my it's not, no my bloody Valentine. It's no my bloody Valentine. The, of, the Bell of uh, Harry Warden. Harry yeah, Warden. it's no that yeah. because that was more or of like a, that was more of like play a lute, sing a folk song. Or yeah. what was it? The 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 ones from um of long time Miami Connection. Oh, oh Miami Connection. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, yeah. Against the ninja. Against the ninja. <laughs> yeah. These are classics. These are show yeah. classics. Yeah. That Again, are going these will all be released album. on the now that's what I call music <laughs> <laughs> volume one freak show version yeah. at some point in the future. We really should yeah. collect all these. All right, so yeah. I don't know. Fucking jumps off. Yeah, that's yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. the end of the film. Yeah. Um so our I guess just before we wrap this up. Are the charges of misogyny against slasher films warranted because your character is a misogynist? Yes and no. A little bit, a little bit of a column right, A, a little bit of B. With, uh, um, a character can be misogynist in a movie, but that doesn't make the movie misogynist because he's supposed to be the villain. Yes, right. you can have a misogynist villain. Yes. Right, as yes. long as the movie doesn't share his point of view. Right. Yeah. Does the movie share his point of view? Because we were talking earlier, it does, I think, in some ways, try to get you to identify with him. 
I, I mean, I feel like the point of view shifts a lot in this movie. Is it split 50 50 or is he more dominant in the film than because she basically has to. This is the thing about these movies, mm. or, or I guess in this case, mm. Uh, he is the driving force of the story of right. the plot. What he say, is he's doing, doing more makes the movie move. Yeah. What mm-hmm. she is doing is reacting yeah. to mm-hmm. his movements. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So it may be close on how often they're put on there, but he, like you said, he's the driving mm-hmm. force. Yeah, that's about. It feels. It felt like fifty fifty. Mm-hmm. Like there is a, a moment where we, you know, stick with him for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it feels like it's pretty well split. Yeah, because she has enough of a personality and, I guess, enough screen time. Sure. This is why I said at the beginning it feels like a two-handed yeah. you know, thing. There's two people in this movie yeah. that matter, mm-hmm. and everybody else is secondary. <laughs> right. Two people and their weird fucking son. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I tell you what, listener. I mean, unless you guys have no. anything no. else. Well, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go around the table. We're going to tell you whether or not you should watch New Year's Evil uh, to celebrate the new year. Of this year of our Lord 2019 coming soon. Uh, so, but first, we're going to answer some of your mail. Uh, and to do that, we're going to summon our mailman, Igor. So, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Mm, he's got red pantyhose over his head. Thanks, I don't Igor. like that. But I like the visor, though. Yeah. The, visor the visor works, works for, for Igor. Igor. Yeah. Bravo. Lose the pantyhose, stick yeah. with the visor, you'll be cool. And right. leather jacket. Well, uh, again, before we read your mail, we invite you to join the Freak Show family. Please write to us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. On Twitter. At Sad Freak Show. All right, jumped out of order over no, on right. Instagram <laughs> at Saturday Night Freak Show. We're also down a member, so yeah. we're just like, wait, who takes it? Sean and I both looked at each other, and I'm I was like, like oh, I don't fuck, take I'll anything take but Twitter. Yeah. I don't know what to do. Holly is on assignment <laughs> tonight. Uh, Travis Michael writes in and says, I've really grown to love this podcast, and I think it's only gotten better as it's gone along. The older episodes are good, too, but I prefer the current format, so keep Aww. doing what you're doing. Oh, thanks. thanks. That's really sweet. Appreciate it. Uh, about the movie we watched tonight, New Year's Evil, mm. Amos Martinez writes in and says, it's not the best bunch of the early, not, it's not the best of the bunch of early slashers, but it's not terrible either. The killer's voice never fails to crack me up. <laughs> it's exactly. The killer's voice is fucking weird. It's just, yeah. you gotta hear it. It's, it sounds Email. like he can't take himself seriously. <laughs> yeah. call, is it a vocoder? Mm-hmm. What do you call that? I don't device? know. It's weird because they show it in the movie. Yeah. It's not like something goes on the larynx. He no, sticks it's, it's it in his too, mouth. But it also connects yeah. to a square or some or other. Yeah, which it's a whole he's thing. like dialing right. some kind of he's, weird yeah. technology yeah, going yeah. on there that I'm it's not weird. familiar with. Yeah. That's weird. Uh, HP says New Year's Evil is an amaz- amazing choice. I love this little offbeat movie that was made during the time slashers were still trying to find their footing. Question for the group. What are your favorite holiday slashers not set during Halloween? Black Christmas. Sean. Oh, okay. Black Sorry. Christmas. The, ori- the original is yeah. it's an a- amazing movie. The remake is fucking terrible, and I can't believe Bob Clark was involved with it. But was he? Yeah, he was, he was a producer. A, ex- a producer. Yeah, that's that a, that's involvement. A I watched I watched that new one once, and I was so long back ago, I don't cookies. even remember it. Yeah, Flesh Cookies yeah. is all I think about. Oh, that right. stupid right. fucking Parts of it, but is for- it yellow? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't remember jaundice or something. Yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, I didn't yeah. like that movie. I'm gonna go with my bloody Valentine. My bloody Ooh, that's Valentine's a good one great. too. That's a great one. Yeah. yeah. Damn, those Canadians, man. They yeah. know how to right, do so it. I took uh-huh. my bloody Valentine. I knew yeah. I was going to get in there. I was going to claim it before Sean got it. Well, you can't just Michaela's claim it. Michaela's got black, black, Christmas. black Christmas. Now, what do you have? Holiday Sean? slashers? What are the holidays? What do we got? <laughs> so you got whatever, Easter, whatever Easter slasher there is. <laughs> well, Slaughter High is technically what are they one. Celebrating? What uh, April Fool's Day in oh, Slaughter High. Yeah. Jeez, I got a spoon feed it to you. I'm not good at remembering things. We got Prom Night, Graduation Day. You got Thanksgiving, Blood Rage. You got uh, Thanks sorry. killing. Not set on mm-hmm. Christmas, eh? There's a bunch. Or not well, set on can, Halloween. You can. There's a bunch. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> Silent Night, Deadly Night Part Two. Yeah. <laughs> Silent Night, Deadly Night Part Two mm-hmm. is Sean's cool. favorite. Uh, yeah, Part Two. Jesus Christ, man. Okay. <laughs> uh, about All right, part one as well, but you know, part two. Part two basically is part most of the footage from part one. Ah. Okay. Uh, Bad Moon. 
Uh, about our movie, Bad Moon, Movie Guru Podcast says, uh, I just rewatched this movie and I remember being way scarier than it was. The werewolf design was good. It was just had a bad transformation scene and a horrible wild wolf cry pitch and scream. Mm. Yeah, that transformation scene. Y- yikes. Well, granted, like as uh, <laughs> we have to, the editorial notes on that is the transformation scene is available in the theatrical cut, but it was removed from the director's cut, which may be the only one you can see now. I don't mm. know, but uh, that well, is gone. we we watched the we watched on Prime and we watched the uh, R-rated version, so we saw the transformation. So it's out there. But That's watch true. the director's cut by Eric Red, the uh, unrated one Shout Factory put out. That's the the version to watch. Okay. Uh, Christian Steele writes in and says, "If you're going to get taken out by werewolves, they might as well be hot chicks before they attack, <laughs> like trick or treat." Yeah, There's no, that's that. that is my favorite of the vignettes in Trick or Treat. Is oh, yeah, the werewolf one? Too. That's my favorite one. one. You that's know, I heard sidebar. I <laughs> heard that uh, Michael Doherty was actually thinking about making a TV show based on that, <gasps> where it was going to be called. I think there was going to be called Bitches, and it was a bit of about a bunch of girls <laughs> turned into werewolves. Sure. And it never. Uh, I love everything you're saying right now. I yeah. would be like the first person to watch there the show. You go. Uh, Grant Parrish writes in and says, I have only listened to you guys talk about this. I assume that means he didn't Moon. actually watch the movie Bad Moon. But is there a symbolic reasoning between Mariel Hemingway having the line of don't mess with a lawyer on her home turf, which we thought was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. uh, and then the movie showing her at home primarily, and she is the one who shoots down the werewolf. I mean, Probably, but the movie doesn't lay the groundwork enough for that payoff to be worth it. Are you here for that one? No, I'm not here for that. No, one. no. Uh, I, I I know she's a lawyer who does not leave her house from yeah. what no, I've heard in the episode. No. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, she's always at home. I mean, I think probably Grant, you are on the right track, but uh, whether or not the movie uh, you're you giving know, the movie too much credit, it uh, doesn't. Yeah. No, well, I think it was probably there in the writer's mind, but mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I, doesn't, yeah. Uh, Chris Huddleston writes in and says his top five werewolf movies are The Howling, American Werewolf in London, Dog Soldiers, Ginger Snaps, and the 2010 remake of The Wolfman. I Those are all great choices. I was choices. waiting for Ginger Snaps. To all show, great but I didn't choices. Hear it on that Colin episode. said it. Oh, did you say Yeah, and I was mad because I totally forgot about that yeah, movie. And I was like, God damn it. But I noticed that, like, with American Werewolf and The Howling, uh-huh. they tend to be interchangeable, it seems like, to certain. Uh, group uh, age range, sure. right? Not it's to me. The one that you came to first, <laughs> yeah. kind of, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that's a great yeah. list. No, it's a solid list. Well, about sidekicks, uh, Dom Cree mm-hmm. believes that the mullet game in Sidekicks was top notch. Yeah, mm-hmm. it should have been uh, throughout. It was the yeah, just give mullets throughout. Yeah, it's just the one scene. The yeah, yeah. yeah. the yeah. hitman had all the mullets. Uh, Johnny New Jersey says the discussion on sidekicks brought out the thought of uh, were the overcompensating where the overcompensating karate character comes from. Uh, he says while there are many, the main one that comes to many people's minds is a guy named George Dillman. He was most notable for being a karate instructor to many celebrities, including Muhammad Ali, which is probably why Ali had an oddball MMA match in Japan against An Antonio. Inoki in 1976. Uh, he also sent us video from like a uh, what was it like a 48 hours or 2020 thing uh, about uh, Dillman like uh, knocking people out with his chi. Oh, oh wow! Is he one of those guys. He's one of those so guys. so this is you know weird. So, I was talking about how like, like is it religious a, dudes are just like Wah! yeah and knocks a bunch of people. Well, over. he does actually make contact, but yeah. knocks people flat on the Right, their I've seen these. It's like on that episode I was talking about like is it a meme like that idea of that like overly zealous like taekwondo instructor and I think that's what yeah. he's talking about. He's yeah. like there is yeah. a dude that is like There's always like I've the seen that guy. Yeah. over the top. So there players. is a real life version. That's great. I love having an answer to that. No. Well, I'm going to look that guy up. I'm curious now. George Dillman, I'll send you the link. Yeah. George Dillman also or sorry, Jesus Christ. Johnny New Jersey also says question for the New Year's episode, uh-huh. which is this one. <laughs> what what is each of yours best and worst freak show picks of the year Ooh, boom put right. us on the spot sean go of the i don't everything uh, we watch is do come back you can't come back that. to you sean i'm not a good i have to look at li- i can't even pick my nope. own year yeah. end yeah. list without <laughs> looking at a list of what was released for the year i have no idea what do we do this year uh what do we fucking hate 
uh, I, I shocking I mean, dark. We hate it. Shocking well, dark. Hate it, uh, but dark. I, can I pick my own? As I, I think shocking dark was yeah. my least Kathy's favorite. Kathy's curse was also. Oh, a shut bad, up! That was great film. <laughs> yeah, your mother's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just for that line alone. You can't uh, dismiss that. I one. found Kathy's curse more watchable than shocking dark, but like <laughs> shocking, dark shocking dark was pretty was, was fucking the, bad. All right, I pick my own as I, far as like I think worst. As far as like people under the stairs wasn't good either. I no, that was bad. I really didn't enjoy that. As far as best, I mean, I had seen The Wraith before, but like I would say The Wraith was one of my favorites. But I would also see The Wraith. The Wraith, the Wraith, the Wraith was though, really I didn't good. recommend I it. I love how you right. guys are all coming around on The Wraith yeah, now, I'm even though I was the only who recommended it. I have watched um, it since. Yeah. I'm and, coming around on Slaughter High, which is another like, what? I think it's a memory. It does yeah. weird things to you. No, it wouldn't yeah. be one of my but favorites. As, but as far as ones I hadn't seen before that I think was the was best. Great. I, I would say I think the blob was the best one that I hadn't seen before that I liked the most. The I blob also was liked fucking awesome. Hercules, so thank you. You came around on Hercules. Hercules. <laughs> yes. Alligator was great. Alligator was that fucking was awesome. That was a fun one. Yeah. Did I not like Hercules when we saw it? None of us oh, did. Because we None also of us had your your the yeah. hunter in the future, and was it was not year. a good comparison. Yeah, uh, your oh, I forgot yeah, about your. Was there was, three. You know what? There was some down. good stuff <laughs> this year though. We did some good Colin stuff. Colin had like the most fire picks this Humanoids year. Humanoids from the Deep. That was, yeah, we enjoyed that one. Anaconda was one of my favorites. That <laughs> podcast is great. Go back and listen to that one. I had mm-hmm. fun with that. Mm-hmm. That comes right after the rain. Green Slime was also this Green year, slime wasn't was it? Good. Yeah. Green Slime. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just go back through our catalog and listen. Sure. Because we had some winners this year. And we hope to continue that. On into 2019. We did mm-hmm. do Cemetery Man, though. I'm sorry about that one. You I, should be you know sorry for. I know we didn't. I didn't recommend it. See, this is weird. It's like now I'm like I'm revisiting some of these. Just because you don't remember, you're just like, yeah. Because I still have fond memories of Cemetery Man. Okay, Uh, so what we're gonna do? Let's go around the room and find out what we all thought of New Year's Evil. Sean, what'd you think of New Year's Evil? New Year's Evil. Um, man, look at that. Look at that box art. I've seen that for years and never seen this movie. (laughs) What are we Uh, looking at? We're looking at those uh, of us who are visually impaired. December calendar. And somebody is burst, a head is bursting through it with a hand with a switchblade knife, and below it says New Year's Evil, a celebration of the macabre. <laughs> is it really a celebration of the macabre? Nah. I don't feel like it. I don't think that's what they're doing. Up on top is another uh, uh, tagline Don't dare make New Year's resolutions unless you plan to live. Which that's I mean, terrible. Sure is good. That's fine. That's. It's not a good line, but it's a good piece of advice for yeah. your life, I guess. <laughs> like, don't do it unless you're going to be life alive. Advice. Good life advice. There you go. Um, somebody said in in mail, this was a very, uh, it felt like an offbeat um, movie. And that, that kind of hit, I think. It feels very offbeat. It does feel like they hadn't quite, either they hadn't quite figured out their formula or they knew the formula and were trying something different. Um, and I, I appreciate about this. I, I did like this movie. I found it entertaining. Um, it does some weird, it's some different things and some weird things. The twist with her, uh, him being her husband. I'm just like, oh, I didn't see that coming. I kind of like that idea. That was good. Cause you figure it's a fan. Right. Or yeah. something. Yeah. It's just like, we're spending the whole movie trying to figure out like, all right, why is he going after her? And it could have been some weird reason, like I guess you said he was a fan or something, but for him to be her husband, I'm just like, oh, got me, didn't see that one coming. So any movie that can like surprise me like that, pretty good. Uh, the other thing is her fucking son, which is the most, it's the weirdest and most unique thing about this movie, and it's just, it's fucking wild as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> like that, I don't know what they're doing with that kid, but for, you know, a good scene or two, he's just standing there in front of a mirror like dragging pantyhose on his head and just talking to himself <laughs> and showing up in later scenes doing that and then showing up in later scenes looking perfectly normal just laying on a bed what was the surprise he meant to tell his mom <sighs> I, th- I think it was about his dad like the dad was I there I think so yeah. that's what it because, because he, he said mentioned it they had had off right uh, you know conversations right yeah so I feel like that's what that was I don't uh, was it earlier that he was also talking about it? I don't know later on when he says I don't want to be part of this anymore it's because the dad was there but there's that. Um, I mean, uh, there's a Richard Nixon mask. That's a plus in the column. Um, he jumps I'm still off. Still not convinced on that. Ah, it's got to be Nixon. He jumps off. It's weird. It's a weird like ending to the movie. Like he jumps off a building and just kind of. It doesn't feel like. Doesn't feel like these guys want to do stuff like that. Like they're not in it to kill themselves. They're in it because they want some kind of like. I don't know, uh, attention, notoriety, like they want, they're they're doing it for a purpose and for him to just jump off a building at some point kind of didn't feel like, you know, 
maybe honest to that. But again, it's different. It's unique. It's weird. There's some weird moments. He's in a dumpster and he like <laughs> fucking jumps out and shit. Um, it's unique enough and weird enough where, uh, yeah, I recommend this movie. I thought it was a very interesting one. And what other, uh, besides like Terror Train, what other New Year's ones are you going to get? So I recommend New Year's Evil. I enjoyed it. And it's a little weirdness. Feels like there's more. I'm now now I need to answer that question. You've challenged me. Michaela. One of the other <laughs> New Year's Eve horror movies. You think about it, Colin. Right. Michaela. So this movie is weird and illogical, but that's exactly what makes it fun to watch. Uh I feel like we probably all thought we were like five steps ahead of this movie, and then the third act happened and we were like, Oh, like, well, huh? no, no, I guess I wasn't. Um it it's got like all that 80s stank on it that makes it delightful little time capsule. It's it's not what I expected at all. I no. thought it was going to be like a paint by numbers slasher and it is for like maybe the first act and then after that it kind of just drops everything. It's got good shades of like 10 to midnight that we, you know, like just like that weird 80s killer that like gets really obsessed with like one specific thing and exhibits it in one specific physical trait. Mm-hmm. Um just to watch him pull the red pantyhose over his head and be like, I have a mental illness is <laughs> to himself. He's not talking to anyone That's, himself. I want to, can I get a, a, a gif, gif of, of that? that? Yeah. Like, I have a, a mental, mental illness. illness. I would use yeah. that yeah. so much. Um, I, how has that not been gifted a million <laughs> times? Be. Like, like how is Tumblr not all on top <laughs> of that shit? Like, wow. Um, yeah, no, the, everything we've kind of like taken this movie to task for is the exact reason why you should watch it because I don't think you're going to see many other movies uh, make the weird attempts that this movie is going to. Yeah. Um, it's not like, it's not a superior film in any sense. It's no Black Christmas. It's no Halloween. But like, who cares? Right. If, you know, it doesn't but have they to all be. can't be that. Exactly. And to be different from that is a uniqueness and something on its own Exa- that you should watch. Yeah. I feel like if it was just like a cheaper version of those movies and hit the same beats, we'd be right. criticizing we'd be like, it for eh. doing that. So, right. And it would probably end up being boring. Yeah, exactly. So... Um. Yeah, I definitely recommend. It. I think yeah, check it out, Colin. I'm shocked, actually, <laughs> <laughs> that you both like New Year's Evil. Um. Yeah, I think. Uh, <laughs> Did you like New Year's <laughs> Evil? I think no, it's the question. We took the wind the, out of the sails. To be honest, uh, yeah, I was kind of. I mean, I have been on a kick recently. Of watching 80 slasher movies. I got a a subscription to Shudder. It's the greatest thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And so now I can go back and watch all these things that I missed. I mean, I saw a number of them, the bigger ones that became franchises, but I missed some of the smaller ones. So I've been going back and checking these out. New Year's Evil showed up at a discount DVD store, uh, you know, a couple months ago. And I bought it going like, I'm going to hold on to this. (laughs) <laughs> until New Year's, and then I'll watch it, and it just uh, it happened to coincide with the slasher kick that I'm on. Um, the better slasher movies, to me, I think what appeals to me about the slasher film genre is a very specific um, formula. You know, this is something that uh, I don't know that you can deviate from it and still be successful, mm. because I think this movie is deviating from the formula, which really hadn't been... Uh, codified, you know, it hadn't been nailed down yet. So, I mean, I I get that that it is, uh, it's not reacting to a movie formula, right? Mm-hmm. It's trying to be its own thing, and we're maybe saying it's a slasher film because it came out of that era and it borrows some of the same right uh, tropes. You know, a mad killer on the loose who's you know, but I don't understand this guy's psychology at all, and usually. You know, they usually do give you in these slasher movies like, you know, uh, some kind of lip service to like, you know, he's crazy because this guy doesn't behave like a crazy man to me. He can be suave. He can be rational. He can be logical. You know, it's like all these things are, uh, I guess, you know, you could say, well, that's what makes him super scary is because he does think like a sane person about murdering people. Why is he murdering people? I don't know. Because they're not people that uh, Blaze knows. Right. He's just arbitrarily saying, because my wife runs a uh, New Year's Eve tele- in the tele- uh, television show, 
I'm going to kill someone on every time zone. I'm going to kill four people right. until I get to someone close to you, which the, the assumption is, that's what he says at the beginning. The assumption is that means it's going to be the sun. Yeah. So I don't know if that was ever going anywhere. It doesn't pay off. No. I don't understand it. Uh, I, you know, the fact that uh, we do spend so much time with this character is kind of interesting. So, I mean, I do think that there is some merit to the film, but as a, uh, you know, it wasn't satisfying to me. I think, you know, by the time you got to the point where he fucking killed himself, <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, all right, so what the hell was the point of this? What was he trying to do? He doesn't really make, you know, as a killer, um, even though his presence is felt throughout the entire movie and he does have a personality. I think you probably, this is what you're going to remember about this movie. You're going to remember that guy. Yeah. You remember him and you'll remember her, you know, and maybe if you're lucky 20 years from now, you remember the son with the fucking, you know, <laughs> pantyhose on his head and the visor, but I doubt it. You're going to remember this is a movie between this crazy dude who went around killing people in time zones and the girl who was the, you know, DJ mm. hosting the, the thing. Um, I don't feel like he would give up. Like he went so elaborately to plan all this stuff out to get to her. It feels like jumping off the building is him giving I think up. That's where the movie misses. Uh, what would have made it more interesting yeah. is uh, when his plans are thwarted, that he doesn't get to make the mountain time murder. Mm. Uh, this crazy fucker who spent all this time planning this stuff, I think would lose his mind yeah. and that would fuck up the next you know, his next plan, but that doesn't happen. We don't see him flip out. Right. He still seems to be like, Oh, okay. I can shrug it off as long as I get to my wife. And then it's like, but why are you doing right. this? In the so first if that's place? not a big what deal, the then why are we doing right. all this? Exactly. Why don't you kill her? It's because yeah. somebody thought up, you know, Halloween was a big hit. Right. And somebody so thought gonna... like, we need a reason for it to be new year's, <laughs> yeah. but also be an hour. What and can half we, movie. what can we hit on a release schedule? If we go into production now, we can probably get one out right. by new year's Eve Yeah, and new year's, Eve hasn't been uh, you mean the scariest New Year's holiday. Evil. That Boom. was that was how that came together. That oh, was yeah. the pitch. We can get up by New Year's <laughs> Eve. Don't you mean? Yeah. That's how it came together. I think uh you're probably right. Um so yeah, I mean oddly enough, I think I'm not gonna recommend <laughs> the movie that I chose. Uh, Colin brought this, Colin owns this. Yeah, so I own it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll probably watch it every uh New Year's <laughs> Eve. But should you watch it? I mean, obviously, uh as a New Year's horror movies go, you know, I was looking, uh, you basically do have this in Terror Train, mm -hmm. and there are several, like, Bloody New Year, and stuff that, you know, from 1987. No one's right. going to watch those. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, if you have to have a New Year's Eve horror movie, then I would recommend it. So, there you go. You got that. Hey. But as a slasher <laughs> film, it was disappointing because it wasn't exploitive enough. And I think you need to have... Uh, you know, certain gory kills, yeah. Um, in your slasher movie to provide the kind of the spice of, uh, you know, the what gives it its flavor, spice. you know, the, because it is uh, about discovering in some ways these uh, state of the art motion picture illusion, you know, makeup effects illusions. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys were able to pull off, and uh, this one is like, we don't even have that, uh, at all, and um. Uh, yeah, I think it, it ends up New Year's Evil is an interesting um it's interesting and just looking at the evolution of the slasher film is like this is the way that the genre chose not to to pursue. Mm. You know. So for that, it's interesting. It's an interesting, interesting piece of history. Yeah, it's it, exactly. Uh, if you're into the slasher films, but it's not necessarily a movie that otherwise you should go out and uh and seek out, I don't think. This is the weirdest fuck. <laughs> I thought for sure you guys were going to be telling me that it was boring and like this yeah. and that. And I was not bored. I, okay. Well, then that a great means sin of many of these movies, but mm -hmm. I was not. Well, bored. again, they're on their first watch and I'm on my second watch. So that may have something to do with it. I mean, In six it months now, awesome. we all might have a different answer. I know because you know? after watching this, like this is a, this is a better made movie. I would say than either intruder or, or a slaughter high, which we watched. Both of which I like more. <laughs> yeah, but same. that's my point. It's like it, I look back, even though I didn't recommend either of those movies. Uh -huh. I remember on those episodes, I look back more fondly on those than I do on this. Sure. Mm -hmm. 
right? Fuck, I want to watch Intruder again. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Uh, so I, I guess, would advise you to pass. <laughs> New Year's Colin evil. is a complex, complicated man. Yeah. Uh, His thoughts. It's strange. Uh, okay, so that means that next week uh, we are going to, this is the big moment that you've all been waiting for. We've been doing this every year. For two years. <laughs> I think this is our this third. This is our third year, yes. Right. Third, uh, the best. One of them got deleted at some point. Like we, we recorded it, and then it just, like, our engineer was just like, nah, that's not good. Too drunk. Delete that shit. That was, what, 2015? We did it. We have 2016, 2017, 2018. 2018. So we've. Attempted this four years. Yeah. We have no, this done is, it I think for three it's the years. Third. Oh, so he's attempted four. Okay. Attempted gotcha. four. Yeah. We've actually done it for three years. All right. So we're going to give you uh, our gift to you. Is yes. <laughs> we're going to look back at the year of 2018 in cinema and tell you what we th- thought our five best and one worst movie of the year yes. was. Mm-hmm. I know you can't wait to check this out. I know this is this pushing is my off, favorite episode of the year. You know, it's also pushing off the January uh, viewer uh, listener extravaganza, but that's yes. coming soon. Mm-hmm. And we don't even know what that's going to be. And uh, please vote uh, if you have time here uh, for what you would want us to watch. Yes, please. So mm-hmm. until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.